Good morning. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Okay. All right. Um, may I um, may I request that we start the program today? Um, let me apologize for starting the program a bit late. I think what we are trying to do is to make sure that we have a good number of um, participants that register those who registered before we before we start. So um, can I request that uh, one of uh, the names that I can see here gives us the opening prayer. Uh, Afusat Adeola Mohali, can you give us the opening prayer? Please unmute her and let her give us the opening prayer. Afusat. Unmute, unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Okay, go on. We thank Almighty Allah for the for today's gathering. As we are about to start this meeting, oh Lord, we commit it unto your hand. We we start with Bismillah and we are we should end with Alhamdulillah by the grace of Almighty God. Let everything we deliberate on today be successful. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Allah La taxu is in not to Walan Homo, Lamoffi Samoa to Amoffi Haridi, Monshalezi, yes, for in the Willa Bisney, Yala Mobile Nadi, him one more caliphal. While I hit to no be shame, mean a hilly me, Ila be Monsha, was a crucif, Samoa to Walhard, while I owed you so more while I live as in Hami. Amen. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Um. Uh, let me first of all welcome our uh, facilitators today and also uh, in, the, in the same light, the candidates. I'm not sure the president is with us, um, so but let me acknowledge him um, as the head of the institution. Um, my president, you are acknowledged, sir. Even in absentia. Um, and also, I want to acknowledge um, management committee members that may be joining us, uh, and also distinguished council members, and of course, fellows that are joining us as, um, as supervisors, and also uh, aspiring estate surveyors and valuers. Um, Good morning and welcome to this interactive session. Um, it's not going to be um, a long-winded uh, program. We're not going to take much of your time. Um, the purpose is actually to guide you. Um, like we said in the, uh, in the notification that was sent out by the Secretariat, um, it is actually meant for those probationers that have actually completed the professional exams, um, qualifying them to go on to the um, uh, critical analysis uh, stage. So I'm assuming that all of us that are here have passed. We are no longer taking any professional exam with the institution. And the the, the idea came up as a result of our experience with um, assessing candidates um, and their, 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 their written works. Um, first of all, uh, I think about three or so years ago, the format of the critical analysis changed. Um, we no longer expect candidates to be writing theory and then um, literature review, and so on and so forth. It is now focused more on practical experience. Uh, but we found out that a lot of candidates 
still, uh, you know, um, uh, use the old method to present their critical analysis. Um, and also, apart from that, we find out that even the synopsis, uh, when you relate it with critical analysis in terms of what they said they want to do in the synopsis, there is always a disparity. And above all, even the quality of those um, presentation, um, we found out that uh, the quality requires some assistance. Uh, so that's why we came up with this uh, Zoom online interactive um, session uh, to guide candidates uh, in the various stages of that process. I think the first one uh, will be how to select um, a case study and then writing your synopsis because you need to make sure that your synopsis is approved first before you can even go on to um, the, the critical analysis proper. So uh, writing your synopsis, I mean, selecting your, your, your case study, uh, writing the synopsis, and of course the synopsis must reflect, you know, what you have um, written out in your logbook. So um, um, uh, one of our very senior colleagues with practical experience, uh, Estee Sovereign and Valo Adamo Casimo, will be taking you on that, uh, on that journey. And the, the second one is, okay, after you have written your synopsis and you are now, it's now approved, and you are now moving on to write your critical analysis, what and what are we expecting from you in that critical analysis? Um, in terms of the structure, in terms of the content, and then the presentation. And another senior colleague who I will call a veteran of the membership committee too, is going to take us on that. And that is uh, Estes Savian Valua Kajeta and Rohiri, uh, who is the uh, immediate past chairman of uh, Imo State Branch. And of course, um, you see, I said earlier on that we found out that there's always, we always find some disparity uh, between the synopsis and then the eventual critical analysis in terms of the focus. Um, uh, so in order to make sure that we have a, um, an harmonious, um, we, we, we actually achieve harmony uh, in the process. That is from project selection, I mean, case study selection to synopsis writing to critical analysis writing there is a need for us to make sure that we have that harmony. And that is um, the area that um, Estes of and Valua Niyi uh, who has actually um, spoken, um, uh, guided a lot of candidates on the new format. That is the area that he will be talking about today. So, uh, like I said, uh, it is um, a guide. It is to assist you to know what exactly you are supposed to do and what is expected of you. Because when you do whatever you are doing and you present, it is not, you don't need to look at this thing from your own perspective. You need to look at it from the perspective of those who will assess you. So we are bringing, we are bringing it to you today to let you know that this exactly is what we expect from you and this is how to go about it. So that is why, that is the purpose of today's uh, uh, today's uh, exercise. And I think this is something we'll be doing periodically to assist uh, candidates. So we would, um, the, the facilitators will actually have 30 minutes to present their, to make their presentation. Um, and I think um, what the way we we'll do it is um, we will take the presentation one after the other, and then we'll complete it. And then after, after completing it, we'll now have you know, question and answer clarification from participants. It is important that those of you that have started the, that's, that is going to that are going to start it, you wait until the end so that you have a proper a proper understanding of what is expected. We have also invited um, uh, supervisors because we we've also found out that a lot of the uh, problems that we we see in critical analysis. Are also are actually 
as a result of uh, perhaps um, the supervisors not understanding what, um, what and what are expected of them. And then a lot of our supervisors don't even have enough time to guide these young, yeah, young um, colleagues. Um, so that's why we have invited them here so that they can also um, understand and then properly guide the candidates in the process. So I want to thank you for coming. And um, it's one of the initiatives that we are bringing on board to assist uh, members in ensuring quality in their understanding of the profession and also the delivery of the service. So on this note, I want to say welcome once again, and um, I wish you um, um, uh, a successful program. And on behalf of the president, I will declare this, this program open and thereby invite the first speaker, uh, who is uh, Estes Oveo and Valua Adamo Kasimu, uh, to take you through uh, the process um, of selecting your case study and then writing um, your synopsis. And of course, the um, uh, how to go about it. So, Estes Avila and Valerie Adamukasimu, you are welcome on board. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you clearly and lovely. Yes, is Adamu Kasimu there? Yes, it's Sancho John. Okay, let him join so that we can. Thank you, sir. All right. So um, I understand. This is a bit of a Adamukasimu is trying to join us. Um, let me let me just say that I'm impressed with the with the attendance, um, and I'm I'm. I'm really very hopeful that you'll find this very, very, very helpful to you. So do we have Adamu Kasibu now? Um, okay, I think what we'll do, if we don't have Adam Kasimu, can we take on um, uh, ESV Kajeta Uhiri then? The customer you are calling is Can we take on, um, can, can we have uh, Kajeta Ohiri to do his own presentation while we wait for Adamu Kasimu, please? Hold on. 
Hello? Yeah, I'm my first wife. Unmute me. If you if you are better on this me, you will hear my voice. Okay. Please, can you unmute or oh, can you tell oh, Hiri, please? Um IT, can you unmute all the facilitators, please? IT, unmute all the facilitators, please. Okay, we now we have um, uh, Estes of and Value at Mukasimo. Thank you very much. So we we'll take your paper now. Thank you. You have the floor. Yeah. Thank good you. morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, first vice. Okay, thank you. And uh, sorry for the little uh, technical glitch. Can I have the screen shared? Thank you very much. Uh, the first uh, paper we are having today is critical analysis, case studies, selection, and synopsis writing uh, to be delivered by me, ESV Adamut Anali a fellow of the institution. Uh, critical analysis generally is a detailed examination of uh, another person's ideas or work. It is not your idea. You are only examining somebody's idea. It also means to make judgment about the quality of evidence to include support your argument. That's a typographical error there, is to support your argument. It's also a judgment. And it is a candidate's opinion on issues that uh, issues that have problems that provide options on an ongoing or executed assignment. So you can see that critical analysis is not your own, it's just your own view of somebody's. Uh, job. So it is not originally, I mean, the job is not originally yours. So the case study is not your own, but is somebody's uh, project that you are making reference to as a case study. Next slide. Can I have the next slide? I have the next slide, please. It is a detailed study of a subject, such as a person, a group, place, event, or organization, or a phenomenon. It may involve quantitative 
or qualitative methods of presentation. So when we talk about quantitative, we're talking about issues, I mean, uh, that it will present data that are measured in numbers. On the other hand, it could be qualitative when we are talking of data that can be better described. So generally, case studies describe, compare, evaluate, and enhances understanding of a particular critical analysis. So that what, 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 that's what a case study is. So uh, there, will, there, there wouldn't be a proper uh, critical analysis without a valid case study. So it should be based on an executed or ongoing professional task. And the case study must be result oriented. Result uh, oriented in the sense that it must not be a project that has no objective. You can't report on a project that, is, that has no objective. So if the motive of the project is, is profit making, so you should be able to measure because it's result oriented. The candidate must be under supervision by a qualified estate surveyor and valuer. The candidate, the supervisor, must also be financially up to date with the institution for your uh, critical analysis to be approved. And the case study must be related to an approved area of professional competence. You don't, as uh, a candidate uh, seeking competency in estate management and valuation, you go and uh, write something on medicine. That's not an approved area of professional competence for estate surveyor and valuer. But you can do on valuation of hospital equipment. So uh, another requirement is that the candidate must have participated in the project. You cannot just write on something that you don't know anything about. So you don't go and pick another person's work and edit or cut and paste. It must, you must have participated in that particular project, no matter how, uh, no matter the time, so that at least you could have you could have uh, understood some problems and uh, you will be able to uh, offer some options. The supervisor must approve the candidate's choice of case study. It's very important. Uh, most candidates these, day, these days, what they do is that they just think of a very fine topic, present it without the knowledge of the supervisor. Please try to consult your supervisor before making any submission on any case study. Next slide, please. There is a case study triangle, generally. One, the case study must be appropriate and verifiable. Two, a candidate under proper tutelage in an approved training area. That is the candidate. And the third arm of the triangle is that the supervisor must be qualified and must be a member of the institution, either in public or private sector. So even if you are working in government, try as much as possible to be supervised by somebody who is already uh, registered and is qualified to supervise. Next, please. Next slide. Therefore, case studies must be appropriate, must be verifiable, and must be controllable by the supervisor. What we mean by this is that the case study you are presenting must be appropriate to your area of the area of competence that you seek to write on. Number two, the project must be verifiable. What we mean by this is that if you say maybe a case study of a, uh, you are writing on management, maybe, say uh, problems of managing high rise housing estate, you should be able to identify that housing estate. And when you identify it, that housing estate must also be verifiable. 
as much as possible, don't look at maybe you say a housing estate in uh, my village, local. Nobody knows local. I can just do copy and paste and claim the uh, case study is there. It is wrong. As much as possible, try to use case studies that are verifiable. And lastly, the one that is controllable. That is at least your supervisor should have a measure of control on that particular study area. Not that you just come to my office because I know or oh, I, I, I know much about management. You write on, uh, on management issues and you come to me and start asking me, sir, how do you, how do you approach on service charge? How do you do this? How do you do that? No. The service charge must have been managed by your supervisor for you to be able to learn properly on that particular subject. Next slide. For case studies, there are issues to avoid. Try to present case studies that are not subject of copyrights or patents. Something that if you write on, might lead to intellectual property violation, right, uh, property right violation. Try as much as possible to consult your supervisor properly before choice of a case study. Also, you should avoid case studies that are likely to raise ethical issues. And when I talk about ethical issues, they are diverse. Anything that will bring, that will bring uh, conflict of interest, try and avoid such case studies. Also, you should avoid case studies on projects that, in, that have non-disclosure agreements in their contracts. So if your supervisor is carrying out a project and he engages you inside, try and ask your supervisor, is there a non-disclosure clause to what we are doing? If there is, you have to avoid it because you might end up create a problem for your supervisor. And non-disclosure clauses are contracts agreements between your uh, supervisor and his employers too. Try also at most, as, as, as much as possible to avoid projects involving heavy financial matters because it may breed a kind of conflict. I'm not, not just, I don't, I'm not saying you should avoid it completely, but if you know there will be no problems, it's okay. But as much as possible, issues involving maybe trillions of Naira in your project, it's like you are disclosing what some people may not want to hear. You also try to avoid case studies that are likely to breach public peace. We all know why, it, I mean, it's so important that we assist in maintaining public peace in what we are doing. So if you know your study area might likely uh, create a breach of public peace, try and avoid it. Also, try, don't expose classified information. For instance, you could be uh, in the, with the police. We are now having more policemen and military men becoming uh, uh, members of this institution. And if one is your supervisor and you are writing on issues that border on national security, you have to be very careful with that because you don't know where that document may end up. So as much as possible, try and write strictly on issues that bother within the profession of estate management and valuation. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. If, uh, if you can hear me, I think I can continue because I have my own slide here. 
Can I go on? Please go on. Okay, thank you very much. Then, uh, again, try your, in your case study to explore new frontiers of estate management and valuation practice. Try and avoid the usuals. Because you will find out that in most uh, critical analysis, out of 10, eight will be on property management. It's not only property management that is, is just the purview of, uh, within the purview of uh, estate surveyors and valuers. There are other areas. That's why estate management and valuation should be our focus. At least there should be emphasis on issues of valuation because I believe every practice firm, most practice firm, firms are into valuation. And this is a critical area that requires further research such that you bring out the problems, you bring out the options, at least the institution and other members stand to benefit from what you will present. So, but at all times, the critical, I mean, the, 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 the case studies are based on property management, service charge management. I think the institution is tired about this. There is nothing new on these things, except maybe if you are going to tell us how to manage central bank or uh, other properties that are, are complex, but the usuals should be avoided. Then try to underpin your core areas, of the, I mean, the core areas of the profession, facility management, property management, auctioneering. Try to look at the faculties, everything, all case studies must, must be contained within the faculties, the existing faculties of the institution. Try as much as possible to do that. And most importantly, you must, in every case, the, every case study must present problems because that is the essence of the critical analysis. There should be problems and there should be options, then recommendations. Then let's look at synopsis because it's a two arm uh, paper. Synopsis, I just have two slides or two or, two or three slides on this. It is, a, uh, it is a shortened, multi-paragraphed version of a given piece of writing. That's the definition. So synopsis is a summary. Simply, it's a summary of the entire, what, what the institution is expected to hear from you. So uh, every organization has its own uh, format of presenting a summary. That is the academic format is there, but the, for the institution, what we have is a 100 word summary of what we expect to hear from you. Just 100 words. And I give you an example. Uh, mortgage financing. Problems of financing. Maybe the, the topic is project of financing ASO estates. Abuja. I mean, uh, uh, pro uh, problems of uh, property, uh, housing estate financing. A case study of ASO housing estate, Abuja. So you should be able to tell us the estate. What are the problems? Just one, one word. And what you think are the options? And what might end up to be your recommendation in 100 words. And there are examples. Uh, you can always uh, refer to your seniors on how to couch this thing so that you don't allow, it is not the screening committee that will go and re rephrase, paraphrase, and do the work, your work, the, the work for you. Because it's how you present it, it's how you will write it. So as much as possible, try to be a master of your own game in drafting your sign -off. So it is simply a summary of what you are supposed to do. And the institution has already provided a format. You will see that the student, most of you, most of the candidates will, will, will write synopsis and they will start writing. No, 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 no. The first thing is the entire document that is a synopsis. That is a synopsis. So you have your topic, Stroke case study. And as I said, managing 
uh, uh, a high class commercial property or case study, of, I mean, case study of Church Gate House. That is a high class pro, uh, commercial property in the city for those of us in Abuja. <laughs> Issues of valuation. In fact, even if it is a two bedroom house that you are involved in valuation, you must have seen one or two problems in the proceedings of that valuation. And it's worth writing on. It's not, you don't look for a very big project that challenges to you. Then you have the topic, the case study, the name of the candidate, his membership number, phone number, the institutions attended, and whatever. I have it on the, uh, on the screen the signature of your supervisor. Please ensure that your supervisor, please diplomatically ask your supervisor if he is financially up to date so that you don't pay the price of somebody's uh, mistakes. Because some of us do make mistake of not paying our annual dues and when your document gets to the institution, it will be returned. And at the end of the day, you, you start alleging that somebody somewhere is not, is after your, your progress, no. So try as much as possible to ensure that your supervisor, I mean, ask your supervisor of his financial standing in the institution so that you don't uh, have problems. So it's going to be sealed. The, uh, the uh, synopsis is going to be sealed and uh, submitted online because there is a window for submitting synopsis, both online and hard copy because the institution is a very, uh, flexible in attending to uh, candidates. I want to thank you for listening. I think I don't want to spend that 30 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Justice of your and Valua at the I think um, you have actually. Um, you know, spoke to the the substance of that topic. Um, I'm sure our colleagues, I mean, our younger upcoming surveyors have heard that um, you know, if you need to go through the the process of election, you need to have a uh, you need to have um, a case study. Because that case study is what forms the basis of your critical analysis and then writing synopsis. And uh, as you have also been told, a case study um, does not need to be um, huge. As a matter of fact, the letting of um, a one bedroom flat, the letting of a one bedroom flat can actually be a case study for the project. Because what we actually need, as we have also heard from, uh, uh, you know, from the presentation, uh, you are not an expert in this field. You are not an expert yet. You are not qualified yet. So we don't expect you to display the same level of knowledge as those of us that will be assessing you. But we are looking at your ability to actually write reports, to uh, communicate, you know, in writing, and then to um, show us uh, how you have actually, um, what you have done, how you did it, and uh, what are the challenges and what, uh, what, how you overcame it. You know, so that is exactly what we are looking at. So you need a case study, the case study can be as small as the letting, the letting of a one bedroom flat. You can also take the letting of a whole of a whole complex, but it is not the size that matters. It is the process. It is how you are able to uh, tell us what you did and in what context. And um, you also heard that it has to be 100 words. That is what we expect not more than that. And um, I've also been told that the synopsis is effectively an executive summary of your critical analysis. So um, 
whatever you're going to do your critical analysis, you should be able to communicate it in 100 words. And that is part of the process. You know, and you have also been advised that uh, rather than just writing on mundane, uh, mundane areas, uh, get involved in other aspects of the profession, wherever you're working, so that you can, you can, you know, uh, come up with uh, ideas that, um, um, you know, projects or crystallizes that will be helpful to your colleagues and even the institution. Uh, but one thing is that you shouldn't write something that is theoretical. And you need to make sure that what you are writing on, on you are part of it. You are fitted in it um, so that when you participate, you will have that, um, that uh, capacity to write practically on what you have done. So thank you very much, um, ESP and Amukasimi. Um, we will go on and take the second one because what we said is we want to take all the presentation so that the, um, the participant will have a whole picture of the whole thing and then they will be able to ask questions. And when questions are asked, you know, then, you know, um, the facilitators can then, can then handle it. So thank you very much. Uh, please, um, we'll take the second presentation. Uh, but please, uh, yes, we well, don't go away. Uh, so I now invite uh, Estee Sovira and Valua Kajeta Nohiri to present his own paper, which is on actually um, uh, the critical analysis in terms of the structure and presentation. So you are welcome on board. ESV Nohiri, thank you. Thank you, my first vice. Thank you, sir. I want to humbly use this opportunity to Thank you for appointing me to do this job. And I wish to welcome our noble colleagues, members of council, fellows, our associates, and our, our yet to be colleagues who are intending to be part of us in whose uh, favor we are providing this training this uh, afternoon. So work, I welcome you all. My name is Dr. Kajita Nohiri. I'm a practicing surveyor. I live in Owere. I'm practicing in Owere. But I'm in Abuja right now. So please permit my presentation of this topic without some graphic presentations. But all I have to say is that if you listen to me very carefully, I am going to be very straightforward, very simple, very brief, succinct, and make sure that whatever thing I say here will help you in the preparation and presentation of your work. I will make it brief because uh, I am presenting this report now straight from my hotel room. So let us go. Um, I was asked to present uh, on a critical analysis preparation, writing and presentation. It's very clear, three aspects of the assignment, preparation, writing, and presentation. So and at each point, I am going to provide what and what is required of you to do a successful critical analysis. When uh, the earlier presenter Adamu Kashimu, my very good friend, has already told you what a critical analysis is. Of course, it is a detailed examination and evaluation of another person's idea or work. But in your own aspect, you have provided this analysis as 
a participant in that project. And the examiners are now critically examining you on what you have presented, or what you have presented mm -hmm. to know whether your approach, whether your analysis, whether the way you handled the problems and challenges, whether they are proper. And if possible, help in guiding you on how to further uh, approach solutions to those challenges. That is why it is a critical analysis. It is aimed at helping both the institution, the practice itself, and you, the uh, participant in that project, in making sure we now have better approaches in uh, addressing those challenges. And eventually we can put it down and equally refer it back to academics as part of the principles that can now be uh, adopted in uh, solving such problems in future. That's the essence. So now let's go straight to the point. The preparation of a critical analysis. How do you prepare? Preparation is the process of putting together. The process of putting things, putting things together for a purpose. And in our own case, the institution has provided you with a format on how to prepare a critical analysis. For those of us who are supervisors, it is very, very necessary that you get acquainted with the format provided by the institution on how to present, on how to prepare and uh, present critical analysis. Now let's go straight to this format. For those of you who are going to appear, please take note that these formats have been distributed to the various branches and it's even in the institutions, uh, uh, institutions documents. If you are in doubt, approach your chairman at the state branch to be able to give you the format for presentation of critical analysis. Supervisors are equally enjoined to approach the state, their state chairman to get acquainted with this format. You need to have it as a working document in your office. So let's go straight. The format says you must have a cover page. And the cover page has always remained as it is in use. The synopsis page has been covered by Adamu Kashimu there. That is number two, the synopsis page. Number three is your PPA results sheet page. You have to include it. Then your acknowledgments, if you like. There may be people that helped you, and it is always good to appreciate them. So these are acknowledgments. And then there must be a certification page, of course, that one where it is certified that the job, you know, what you have done is approved. Then the dedication page, these ones are discretional. You, you, you may have a dedication page, dedicate your work. Since it's a, a, a work you have done, you can still dedicate it. Then the table of contents. Your table of contents has to serially contain what you have provided in the critical analysis page by page in sequence. So that whoever goes to your, to your table of content and looks at the page should be able to get at a particular uh, subhead in any particular page without struggling, you know, from page to page to know where it is. That's the essence. And you have to make sure that your table of content reflects exactly in sequence your work according to pages. You must have done your, your, your uh, what are you, uh, done your reports and uh, your 
what, what do you call it? Your your final uh, papers in the university. So writing uh, writing your research work and all these other things, yeah, you know, they are very very uh, necessary. That that uh, in making references to your work, you have to put up this uh, table of content the way they should appear. Now, now let's go to the most critical aspect of your, your analysis. You have to arrange your chapters according to the ways provided. Your chapter one says project description with pictures, drawings, and other annotated presentations. So I won't go into your project because these are your case studies. They are being handled by Adamu Kashim. So when you are now presenting it, your chapter one must contain your project description. What project is that? Where is it located? What is the brief story, the history? In, in brief, you don't need to go there and write full pages because the institution has made it clear you know, the minimum number of words in order to make sure that your work is concise and succinct. So your, your, your project uh, description with pictures and drawings and other notations is your chapter one. Then after that, you now go to the chapter two. This chapter two is where the key issues will now come up. In your case study, which is the project you have presented. Mm -hmm. There are issues and challenges you now met. What are these issues? What are these challenges? You now present them. Now, after that, you now go to your chapter three. That is where you now look at the options available or the possible solutions. Because every challenge that comes in a project must have at least laid down, uh, there must be history of such things happening in the past and what they practice, both in principles, your knowledge in the classroom, all these things that we are taught. What are these possible solutions that should have been used in addressing these challenges so that you come up with uh, results? So these are the possible solutions and approaches for solving these challenges they come and there must be solutions. Like in medicine, if you have malaria and it is discovered a malaria, what are the solutions? Is it going through taking drugs, medicine, tablets, or is it by injection? Or is it by boosting your immunity? These are the things that you will now bring up here. What are the possible options and the solutions that, are, that can be used in approaching these problems? Now, you go to your chapter four. This, your chapter four, uh, will look at your, your, your proposed or recommended solutions. Because apart from what you now have as principles, the way it has been approached in the past, is there also any way that you see that these challenges have defied most of these options and solutions that have been existing? If so, have you any plausible option? This option is the one you will now highlight in your chapter four. Solutions that you, know, you may now recommend. Let me give you an instance. I am aware that the land use decree provides for payment of com cash compensation or resort resettlement a a whenever properties of individuals are acquired. But somehow, who started resisting, going to court, feeling that monetary compensation has not been adequate. And that has been a challenge a long time. But procedurally, procedurally, in Imo State, there was a time we now felt that we can we, we look at these issues and 
we felt that there could be other solutions instead of applying the normal book solution, which is the one provided. So that in addition to that one, it was suggested that when lands are taken like that, particularly for housing purposes, the government can now uh, give one location within the housing uh, estate. And we discovered that this solution somehow uh, more plausible, more acceptable, reduced conflicts and court cases. So these are some of the things we expect with time that our, uh, our colleagues who are now presenting critical analysis should be able to pick up these challenges and look at you know, ways forward to break some of the conflicts and the jinx that we are having in the practice. So, so that is it. We expect such things and you must give us clear cut recommendations. Then in chapter five, it's just like a complete conclusion, an analysis, a summary of your entire experience in that project. In that case, from this entire experience, what have you? Are you able to handle even an extension of such problems in future? And what have you really concluded? Are you satisfied with it? If there is something left and it is still uncracked as a problem, you now present it and put it equally as a problem that can be researched upon by the institution in future. This, these are the challenges we expect from our our uh, our incoming colleagues who are presenting their uh, critical analysis to us. Now, this is about preparation. But we are now, let us look at the writing. How are you writing your critical analysis? How are you writing it? What is writing? Writing is an occupation of composing text for publication. How do you write? How do you compose? How do you convince, attract attention and interest of the examiner? How do you hold it? Are you using the direct register? You cannot be writing about housing or an issue of valuation, and you will be using the register of a musician or an artist, or when you want to write and you don't present properly in a catchy way that your examiner will be convinced that you are qualified past your PPE. Remember, you must pass your PPE, showing that after being a graduate, both the use of English, the rudiments, the definition, the words, the register that are required in real estate dealings, in construction, in valuation, you must use the register. If you use the register of a quack, a roadside tout, it will not help. It will make your examiner hate your work. So you should be able to arrange your writing in such a way that the examiner knows that you have grown into the professional cadre uh, capable of representing the profession anytime any challenge is given to you in the profession. So your text must be properly arranged. You, 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 in fact, I, I looked at some of the work in the past. I noticed that some of our candidates make use of certain words because they feel that these words are high sounding words, like microcosm, all those things, they were occurring. And when we look at them, we notice that they were used wrongly or being put where they are not even supposed to. Use very clear cut, simple uh, sentence. 
because that will help you present your matter very convincingly. If you use ambiguous words or use complex sentences very long, the way legal draftsmen write English language at a point, the, the first meaning changes within the middle of the sentence. And at the end of the sentence, it makes no sense of what has been written first. That does not help. That is why clear cut, simple sentence in your presentation, in your, present, in your writings, uh, you know, is, is very necessary. So you must uh, always arrange, uh, you know, uh, and number your points sequentially, possibly. You have to use the proper fonts. Some of you, I don't know whether you know, in, in the art of writing, when you write and arrange your points, you know, sequentially, possibly your heading has to come in proper font. If you are writing possibly in 12 point point font, you should be able to make your, your headings, the subheadings, must come in larger font or come in more highlighted fonts so that whoever looks at it, the contrast will be very clear. You will be able to pick your subheadings within your write-up. That makes that shows us that you are now organized, you are more professional, and that you can present a report. Remember, in doing this, you are equally learning report writing. So if you don't present your points in subheads where it is easy to pick a point, discuss it, look at uh, how you have arranged it, then it means you have not started. So you should arrange it in, in, in proper sub subheadings so that the body of the text, there will be a contrast between the subhead and the body of your text so that the examiner will look at it and be impressed that your points are well arranged. If for any reason you have to quote, you have to quote properly using quotation uh, marks. And possibly, even if you like, you can put your quotations in italics or make sure your quotations are easily identifiable within the body of the text. These are very, very important. You understand? So this is the art of writing. You must be simple. You must use correct sentences to impress your examiner. You must use the correct register when you are writing. You must make sure that the writing is very clear. Then, in preparation too, you are asked to bind and type. If you, if you do photo start copies and they are not clear, or the main work is not properly proofread. In other words, there could be a lot of printer's devil or certain lines are jumped, making mess of the meaning you want to convey. They, these are irritants. They make the examiner highly irritated and it can lead to your failure or your, your work can be rejected. So in the first place, make sure that the production is neat, make sure you proofread, Make sure that the binding is neat and make sure that you adhere to the number of words as provided by the institution in the guideline. Now, let's go to presentation. Let's believe that you have now understood how to prepare your report and how to write and write very well. Let's go to presentation. If you have authored your work and you participated in the project and you are properly supervised, there is no how you will be jittery when you come during the presentation of your critical analysis. Presentation alone, mm -hmm. presentation does not depend on how gorgeous you look. The, how expensive your shoes, your wristwatches, your shirt, and how your hair do. It is not. You, yes, you will be clean. You will dress well to show that you are a career estate surveyor and valuer. You will be clean. 
because you are coming before your colleagues, you are coming before your senior colleagues to be. You have to, yes, dress well. But apart from dressing well, inside the good clothes and shoes must apply your confidence that you are the author, that you are a participant in the project for which you have written the critical analysis that we are going to do. So when you come, you, 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 you have to know how to do presentation. What is presentation? Presentation is either a speech, a talk, you know, in which an idea or a piece of work is shown and explained to an audience. If you are a master of what you have done, explaining it to us will not be a problem. One, we will look at you. If you are jittery, it means that you lack confidence. It means that you, you, you are not the author. So we will look at your confidence. And when you are present, presenting, you may be asked to present in a summary your work. Because if you started from introduction to possibly the recommendation and the conclusion, you should now be able to present it sequentially without going through your pages. You give us just a summary, which means when you are now presenting, you should show us, should let us see the introduction, what project, where, when, how did you participate? Then you now tell us your challenges that you met. And you should be able to tell us how you, you these challenges uh, naturally through the books or through practice, as far as you know, should be solved. And then you now tell us your own personal approach. How did you do it? Then, of course, questions will come. If we ask you questions and you don't answer, which means you are blank, nothing. We, we, we are not going to teach you. We are not there to start teaching you academics, what you have learned from your first year to your final year in the university. You should be able to know the components of a building. Because if you are writing about a building, managing, and other things, and you don't know anything about issues of maintenance, issues of materials, how to record costs, how to you know, present possibly uh, accounts to your principal, it means you are writing on a project you don't know. So you should be able to get yourself well-grounded. Money will come. Because the problem I know about most of you is that you are thinking about the money first. It is not true. Go and do the practice, just like it is written in the book of Matthew in the Bible. Eh? Seek ye the kingdom of God first, and every other good thing shall be added unto you. So try to learn the work. Know how to deliver and satisfy your client. In the process, the challenges will come, and you will know how to address challenges. So that when you now appear before us, you will be able to share with us, as colleagues, all these challenges. And that shows confidence. So there are things you must avoid. What are the things you must avoid in preparing and in writing and in presenting? You must, like I said, you must avoid ambiguity. Don't put down anything you are not sure of. Because your more experienced colleagues will ask you further questions and probe into it. And if you are not sure, you will make a mess of yourself and you will be you, you, you will be in between, uh, <laughs> in between the devil and the deep sea. You will see some of them, they will be helplessly looking at us. Some of them will start crying. You, you don't approach these things and pass by crying or by kneeling down or expecting somebody to go around to converse for you. It's not an election. It's a matter of the knowledge that is housed inside you. Whatever thing you do, this determines whether you pass or you fail, but we want you to pass. That is why we are giving you these lectures. So you must avoid ambiguity, avoid shabby work, avoid any, any computer operator that does not, that is an illiterate, should not type or produce your work. You understand? And then secondly, you should be able to link your challenges to the principles and the practice that you are involved in, so that together, all of us will move the 
the thinking horizon of our profession wider and wider. Because as these challenges keep coming, we keep providing solutions, whether they are book solutions or whether they are intellectual solutions that uh, we innovated. These are the ways that practice is being sustained. So thank you and God bless. Uh, my first vice, I think I can raise my case here and uh, allow uh, the next uh, lecturer to now come and do justice to his assigned topic. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Yes, S.S. Avila Dr. Kajeta Lohiri. Um, that is a most practical exposition. Um, and um, I, I thank you so much. I'm sure uh, participants, both the, candidate, I mean, the prospective candidates and the supervisors will find that uh, very, very useful. Um, I just want to appeal to you um, at your at your um, convenience, please. Uh, it will still not be out of place for you to put all those things into uh, black and white and then forward it to us. Because the whole idea is um, some of these things you want to you know compile and then put together and hand over to these prospective candidates as a guide. So I would still appreciate it if you take out time to let us have um, what you have told us in black and white. But um, we have all seen, and I'm sure the candidates have had, you know, um, how to prepare for your critical analysis. It is a serious business. When you get to critical analysis, that is the climax of all your training you know, right from tertiary institution. Um, so you must accord it the necessary seriousness that it deserves. So preparation is very, very important. When you prepare, you are, you'll be able to go through it without, um, without a problem. Preparation is about planning. Um, and then writing, and you've been told, you know, some of the things you have to watch out for, especially, um, write in plain English as much as possible. Uh, avoid, you know, uh, verbose, avoid um, big, big grammar that will come back to, um, to, to haunt you, especially when you, when you now sit to present your paper before the panel. Um, and then he has also talked about the structure uh, the format of writing the critical analysis, which is very, very important. The guide is there. Um, and then, you know, writing it and then proofreading, that is about quality. Um, the first thing that we see when we are assessing you is your critical analysis before even you appear. And the impression that people form before you even appearing um, is very important. And you don't want a bad impression to be formed even before you appear. So very, very important that you take your planning as preparation seriously. And then the writing, you know, uh, and then the presentation, which is also very, very important. And the presentation is not just the, um, you know, binding and so on, as you said. It's also your appearance before the panel on that day, you know, uh, you need to be humbly confident. Um, uh, you don't need to be cocky. You don't need to be. Um, um, you, don't, you don't need to lack confidence. Um, you need to come on that day with the um, the mind that look, I have I have done everything I could. This is the day now. So let me face it. And then you appear before the panel. So your, your presentation is very important. And your body language, you know, and so on. The panel will be looking at that. Very, very important. Uh, so you've heard it from, um, from the man I call a veteran of the, um, the membership committee. And I'm sure you, you would um, you will have picked up very, very... Um, 
very, very good um, tips there. So, Dr. Ohiri, thank you very much. I appreciate you. But please, like I told them, as I told them, uh, ESV Casimo, please uh, just step aside. Don't go away because um, the participant will still need to ask you questions and provide some clarification. So thank you very much. I now use this opportunity to invite um, the third and last speaker for today, um, uh, Estate Surveyor and Valua, uh, Niyi Faduju, who happened to be a past national secretary of the institution. And um, let me just acknowledge your sacrifice, um, Niyi. Uh, Niyi is, as we speak, in uh, New Zealand. And in New Zealand, it is actually uh, about 1 p.m. now. So uh, for you, 1, 1, well, sorry, 1 a.m., 1 a.m., which is deep in the night. So he has actually um, sacrificed to uh, present this, and we appreciate you, and I'm sure the candidates also appreciate you. So he has been here, if I do you, please, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, 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 thank you, uh, my first vice. Um, uh, please, you, it's in the middle of the night. I'm not in bed, but please just permit me to have my uh, video off, the camera, the camera off. Then I'll be sharing my screen. So I'm not sure if I have that right yet. The host should please make me a call so that I can share my screen. Yeah, the topic is uh, reflecting synopsis contents in critical analysis structure and presentation. And first, I would like to appreciate everyone that has stayed back, the candidates that have taken time to get to this level. They shouldn't be discouraged because the future is very bright. The horizon is uh, very wide and there are a lot of uh, possibilities. Uh, it, once you get the basics right, then also the supervisors that have also taken their time to be part of this, we are all learning together and trying to add to add the value to the profession. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, can you see, can you see the subject uh, slide? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, the topic is reflecting a synopsis contents in critical analysis structure and presentation. And from the topic, what I'm basically doing is doing a, a synopsis of the earlier two presentations. They've made the work easy. So I will just, I will just go with the flow. So the, the outline, basically we'll just look at the synopsis, a few things about the synopsis again. Uh, we'll also look at the critical analysis and then uh, look at the link, where the two of them link. The question is, you know, people, people think that the synopsis, or if I should ask the candidates, which comes first? Is it the synopsis or the critical analysis? Uh, ASV Adam Kasim has stated that the synopsis is a summary. So do you write this? summary before the main paper or you write the main paper before the summary so this is one thing that we need to we need to consider but the synopsis like uh as we kasim had said synopsis is a brief or condensed statement giving a general view of some subject it is also a compendium of ads or short paragraphs giving a view of the whole. It is also a brief summary of the plot of a novel, book, play, or film. 
it can be used as an overview to introduce the work or to provide the readers with a short review. That, that's the, that's the general, those are the general definitions of the synopsis. But for us in the profession, in the institution, I just try to come up with what I think I can use to describe what the synopsis actually is. And that is why I have the synopsis is a brief summary that gives the assessors an idea of your ability to resolve problems using the professional tools you have acquired within the years of privilege. You submit a synopsis. The essence of submitting a synopsis is for the assessors to assess you prior to qualifying you to appear for a test of competence. That is it really worth it? Do we need to waste our time to listen to this candidate? So that is why the synopsis is important. But really, before you do a synopsis, you should have had an idea of actu the actual work the, that you are submitting. The synopsis is just about a hundred words. And uh, ESV Kasim has given the structure of what should be in the, in the synopsis. But yes, so so gener generally there are three main types of synopsis. There's the project synopsis, there's the research synopsis, and the, there's the literary synopsis. I'm trying to tie the uh, general uh, knowledge out there with what we have in the profession so that people can really understand the basis on which we have built what we have. So generally, a synopsis has three essential parts. The characters, the conflict, that's the problem, then the narrative arc. The characters, you are as the primary actor. Because what you'll be writing in the synopsis, in the critical analysis, is what you did. So you are the primary actor. And then there may be secondary actors other than you, which you may also have to refer to at some point. Then the conflict, the problem that you were required to resolve, and the goal intended to be achieved. It has to be part of the synopsis you have written. Then what I what they call the narrative arc, which I call the plot of the story. Simply, what did you do to carry out the task, resolve the problem, or achieve the goal? So the it's about how do you write your reports? Because the synopsis writing is actually a form of report writing and you have to be adept at that. There must be a flow. There must be a plot of the story. What did you do? How did you do it? And all that. So that is what the, those are the parts of a synopsis. Then let's let's also look at the general the critical analysis. ESV Ohiri has dealt uh, deeply into this, but if I don't mention it again, I may not be able to tie them together. So generally, critical analysis is defined as the detailed examination and evaluation of another person's idea or work. That's the general definition of critical analysis. But for our own purpose, I've also come up with some sort of definition. The critical analysis is for the test operational competence, which is the interview the candidates will appear in. 
is the detailed report of experience gathered in the process of carrying out professional tasks to achieve set goals or resolving problems through the deployment of professional skills and knowledge and the evaluation of lessons learned. What, do, what does this really mean? The ASB already has given the structure and I will still, I will still go through that somehow. You have to state, you know, there has to be a flow. What are the problems? Or what is the problem? Those are the key issues. What options? If we're, let's look at valuation or even uh, agency or even management. There is no one way to do one thing. There are different ways. When there's a problem, you have different methods to do it. So if you are given a valuation, you have to consider what methods what approaches to valuation to are available for me before you would then get to which one should I use? If it is management, maybe tenant is defaulting and you want to, you have different options. Do you eject? Do you give them time? You know, there will always be various options. And that is, it's because of the, you know, the various options and you have a process to select the best option. That is why you are a professional. If there is just one way to do something, then nobody will come to you to seek your uh, to seek your assistance to deploy your professional knowledge to solve a problem. They will just rather stay in their houses and do it by themselves because you are not different than them. But because you are a professional, you have superior knowledge then that is why people will come to you to help them solve their problems. And the institution has stated that there will be maximum of 3,000 words for the critical analysis. I will give a tip on uh, what area, what uh, on percentage kind of, I'll just make a suggestion on how many words you should have in a particular area for balance so that when you are exceeding, you, you will know how to tone down the things you are doing in that area. Um, ESV already had talked about the structure of the critical analysis. You have the introduction or the description of the project, you know, it's just simply an explanation of the project and the statement of the specific roles you played the specific roles you played. You must be an actor. ESV uh, Kasimu has said, you has to be a project you participated in. Both of them have said it. So you have to state what role you played in that, after describing the project. Then what are the key issues? You need to articulate the key attributes of the project, stating the problems to be resolved and the goals to be achieved. Then it flows from there to, I'm not talking about chapters. I'm just giving the sequence of the events. Options and proposed solutions. The various options, methods, or ways the problems can be resolved or, and the goals achieved. Then the reasoning for the selected option should be advanced. You should be able to say for so so reasons after considering the various options i have for so so reasons this is the option i selected to solve the problem then the conclusion and analysis of experience the the analysis of experience is a very vital part of the critical analysis because the candidates they are not yet professionals they are still under privilege. They are allowed to make mistakes. And even those of us that have spent many years doing the same things all over and over again, when you finish, you need to review because anybody who is not learning is dead. So you have to review your experience 
and say, oh, yes, although I resolved the issues, but probably if I had done this or that, I may have done it faster. I may have, you know, there is always something to learn. So you you look at, you, you, you tell yourself that, oh, this is the experience I gained. And if I had the opportunity, these are the changes I will make next time I'm confronted with the same problem. So I said I was going to give a tip on the presentation of the critical analysis. Your description, introduction, maybe about 17%. If it exceeds 17%, then uh, other areas are going to suffer. The key issues, maybe about 22%, you know, the options and the proposed solutions, about 28%, then the conclusion and the analysis of experience, about 33%. You can work that out how, when you, when you have uh, 3,000 3, words. It's just a tip. So what is the link? between the synopsis and the critical analysis. And given the different parts of the synopsis as the characters, the conflict, and the narrative, and also the critical analysis as introduction, key issues and problems, options and solutions deployed, reflection and conclusion. Ideally, your critical analysis should be ready before your synopsis, because the synopsis is actually an abstract of the critical analysis. But if, even if your critical analysis is not ready, written fully, then it should be ready in your mind. You should have designed it, you know, so that you can then abstract the synopsis to then write a good summary, which will include the characters, that is you as the main actor and probably and the description of the project briefly. Then you go into the key issues, which I call the conflict. Then you give a brief narrative and then you conclude. The synopsis is 100 words. The critical analysis is 3,000 words. So. Having this in mind, you just have to restrict yourself where you have the characters, conflict, narrative, everything should be within 100 words. So that is, that is the link. And thank you for your audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was actually within 22 minutes. Um, yes, thanks very much. Um, Estes of your value and Nii Fadiju. Um, we've all seen, um, we've all heard from him in terms of linking um, the synopsis uh, with, um, with uh, critical analysis. It is very, 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 very important. Um, um, it's also advised us on um, how to share the words, um, you know, the 3,000 words uh, among the various um, um, parts of the, of, the, um, of the critical analysis. Uh, I must say that that is actually a suggestion based on his own experience, uh, but is by no means a rule, um, depending on, you know, uh, on um, individual um, presenter, uh, you know, uh, candidate. But, well, it's a guide, and I think, um, you know, we, 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 we can start you know on that and if you have if you have to go out of it by all means speak to your speak to your um uh, your supervisor 
Um, but I think um, the presentation raised some issues uh, which I would want us to actually clarify. In terms of which one comes first, synopsis or critical analysis. I think, I think um, uh, ESV Nye, Badu, you has told us that uh, uh, before you even write a critical analysis, you must have a good idea of, um, you know, uh, what you intend to do. Uh, of course, um, you will have done the work, um, you, you know, and what you are now telling us is that you want to do this. Uh, but, but the, so, so it is important that you have that um, available in your mind. But in terms of which one comes first, I think the synopsis will have to come first. Um, because when you are, your, your synopsis is, apart from being the summary of your, your, critical, your, your critical analysis, it is also a proposal, an application to, uh, to the institution for approval that this is what I want to do, uh, telling us what you have, what, you know, the, 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 um, what your, your, your case study, and that this is what you did, and this is what you intend to write on, and this is what you intend to, um, to, uh, to achieve. So it is still your synopsis is, you know, in, in, um, in uh, academic writing, you know, the synopsis tells you critically, this is, um, this is what um, this is going to be. But in this particular case, you are writing, you are making an application. And in most cases, your synopsis is actually approved subject to amendment. Uh, you may say you want to do this, this way, this way, but the, uh, the assessor will look at it and guide you and sort of um, redirect your focus in your synopsis and amend it. So it is the amend, amend, amended synopsis, which is approved, that you now have to go back and now work on. And, you know, the amendment or the comment or the improvement, you know, uh, suggested, you know, by the assessor, which, has, which is now approved by the, by the institution, will now probably inform how you now look at the project that you want to present the what you had in mind may have to be may have to be um you know slightly adjusted and then um uh, to accommodate that uh, that uh, suggestion so i will counsel that while i agree with um uh yes we need if i do you that everybody before you even write the synopsis your project your critical analysis in a way must be in your mind. You must have it. Um, the first thing you need to do is to get approval from the institution of what you want to write. And then that approval may mean that you are further advised, you know, you are further, you know, um, uh, corrected in terms of how you go about it. So it is when you get that, that you are now going to start your real work on the critical analysis, because whatever you are now presenting must comply with what is approved by the institution. So that is the only area that I just want to guide us uh, to, to understand. But to be honest with you, the link that um, um, the paper has presented is absolutely spot on. And I think if you work with it in terms of the structure of the synopsis and the structure of the critical analysis, linking them together, you will find out that every, you know, every part that you find in the synopsis, you find in the critical analysis. The only thing is that while it is brief in the in synopsis, you expand it more in the critical analysis, and I think uh, that's that is the uh, that is something you need to take into account. So I want to thank all our three presenters for an excellent, excellent presentation and guide. And I'm, I hope, or I'm even convinced that the, um, the candidate will, will find it useful. So now not to waste our time, can we now go straight to question and answer? Uh, 
one, you want to ask any question, clarification, please signify by raising up your hands. I think on the on the um, on the platform there is the icon for raising up your hands. So please um, make use of it. And some of you can actually chat and ask questions through chat box. And I will advise the admin to please uh, bring it to our notice if anybody is asking a question through the chat box. So there is, the floor is open for question and answer, please. Who is number one? Question and answer, please. I'm not seeing any hands up. Does it mean that we are all we are all pleased and happy with the presentation? And um, I must confess that the presentations were made in very plain English language, and I think um, I'm sure we all understood it. But is there any question? Okay, I can see Modupe Ladipo. Modupe Ladipo. Please go on with your question. Mudupe, I can see your hands on. Please, can you unmute Mudupe Ladipo, please? Or she can unmute herself. Mudupe, please, can you, can you ask your question? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Thank you for the... Uh, provision and the opportunity to be um, part of this platform. I just want to quickly ask our critical analysis what happens when it, when it exceeds 3,000 words? Maybe you have some more things to expand on. Um, will it be counted against you if you do that? Okay. Um. Uh, Dr. Ohiri, do you want to respond to that? Oh, okay, okay, hold on. Let's let's take the other and uh, the second question. Uh, Olasu Kome, Tanigbola, please ask your question. Let's take this one and then we ask. Uh, uh, thank you very much, sir, Mr. First Vice President. Um, our presenters, thanks so much, and one of the supervisors. Um, one major thing I want to ask is that um, there was a point in time someone was asking me that there, is, there won't be any need for references to come in in as much as the critical analysis. But I mentioned to the person, my response was that there will always be need for ref references because there's no way you can come up with, when during the course of introduction, you must have um, read about some other cases that guided you in profiling solution. There will be need for such um, books or text to have been to, to to be included in the references. Is it necessary for the references, or is pardonable if it is not included in the critical analysis? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Ogundari. Yes, please go on, Emmanuel Ogundari. Unmute yourself. All right, go on. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Please, I just want to ask, and uh, what happens if someone uses a particular front size? like a different font size or like the table of contents i use the different uh, front size then the main body i use the normal 14. so i just want want to know the implications the what might actually come out thank you can i first of all ask um uh, dr Uhir to respond to question and then we go to the other speakers to also have their opinion 
Dr. Uhiri, are you still there? Let's take these first three questions first. Dr. Uhiri, are you there? Okay, if Dr. Uhiri is not there, it's um, ESV Adamu Kasimu there. Okay, if Adamu Kasimu is not there, can we have Niyi Faduju, please? Are you there? ESV Niyi Faduju. Oh, he has gone to, to sleep. He has gone to bed. I know he's... It's one something now, one something a.m. Okay, Nii Faduju, please. You are in bed. <laughs> okay, let me just, um, let me take some of those questions. Number one, Mutukwe Ladipo. Um, you ask about exceeding 3,000 words. Your idea is don't exceed 3,000 words. Try as much as possible to stay within, within, the, um, within the number of words. Um, uh, one of the things you have been tested in your critical analysis is your ability to write report, ability to, uh, to write, to, to write, you know, uh, uh, your ability to be to be brief in writing, um, to communicate your your intention, your ideas in few words. So that is actually one of the one of the um, sorry, doctor. Yeah, please get up. Don't talk much. That's the problem. Oh, we okay. Struggling to speak. Oh, okay. Um, he, he muted us, and we, you can't hear us. Okay, okay, th thank you. Right. Uh, admin, I said you should unmute all the facilitators. Unmute them, please. Don't mute facilitators. So, as I was saying, um, I will br I'll bring back the listing. Um, so, is Dr. Ohiri now available admin can you unmute facilitators please so that he can speak hello is Dr. available yes thank you Dr. Yes, Hiri, we have to I think I think I've actually taken the first one uh did you did you hear the questions Yes, I recorded the questions. Okay, that, please, uh, please. That, that was behind the curtain in, in that I, I cannot come through. Uh, Let's uh, go. Uh, please respond. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Right? So, I want to hear loud and clear so that I can quickly, okay. I can yes. quickly answer. Okay, brother. Okay, thank you. Um, there are three questions here. You have substantially uh, answered the first oh, yeah, one. Hello. Okay, go on. Yeah. I say the first vice, the first vice has substantially answered okay. the first question. And uh, right. I, I just simply who, have who to say. Who is, sorry, who is that talking behind? Please. Admin, I said you should only unmute facilitators. If we have participants that want to speak, then we will unmute them when they are recognized. Please, and let, please, can you make sure that you don't you don't uh, talk while the, something is on the participant? Please, please go on, doctor. Thank you, uh, first vice. I was saying that you have actually uh, substantially answered the first question on exceeding three hundred words in three thousand words. You know, the test of professional competence, uh, the critical analysis presentation, these are examinations on your discipline. If you exceed 3,000 words, it means you are not disciplined, 
in adhering to the rules of the uh, game. And therefore, uh, you may be disqualified if you exceed 3,000 words. Because I think this is a system uh, examination. Once you ex exceed the size, you will not be admitted. So please try to conform to the number of words, the size. Instead of exceeding it, it is better you just come close to it. Because if you know what you are writing, uh, the institution has already done a template on this and they have run, uh, they have already run uh, tests and know that there is no need to exceed 3,000 words. Except if you need to do so, you have to apply specifically for the sake of anything that is uh, very, very strange uh, or any special reason why you have to ex exceed it, you have to apply. And the, the, if the institution grants you that, of course, it becomes a waiver. But as far as you are presenting based on the rules and the guidelines, you should adhere to the guidelines. Otherwise, it becomes indiscipline. That is for number one. Then number two, the need for references. Yes, there could be need for references because uh, you may have entered into a project where by the time you are looking at the challenges and the solutions, maybe there are written solutions for such a thing before that you want to quickly refer to. But that does not, that does not uh, mean that you have to go into uh, the writing of a critical analysis as if you are writing uh, uh, an academic project. But if you want to put a reference, make sure you put the reference in accordance with any style that is acceptable to the institution. Most of the references we hear in Nigeria, we use the, the American Psychological Association referencing uh, style, which is the upper form. But make sure you reference well. And not when you are referencing, you now put the alphabetical orderliness, you put them, you put them, you know, put it as if uh, you are not really doing referencing. So anything you, that is worth doing is worth doing well. So you don't go there quoting books that are not relevant to what you are. That is the problem of referencing that we have seen. So then go and copy authors and books. And when you look at in, into the, uh, the body of the work, you discover that they have no link. So every reference must have a link to that project or to the thinking uh, that, you, that uh, you want to put in as a solution. That is true. Then on the font size, there is need, logically there is need for uniformity. If you want to present in a good font size, the reason for font uh, specification is to enable uh, visibility. The people who reading your work should be able to, you know, see what you are uh, writing. So I made it clear in your in the in the writing form that you should use the correct font size. If you are not sure, you ask. And uh, there is no point if you use uh, twelve point here. You can use fourteen there, and then you can use another one. There must be a sequence. If you are using a particular font for subheadings, you use that font, which must be larger, or at least 1.96 times, or up to two, the main body of the text. This shows logicality. It shows, it shows a, a, a good professional uh, thinking in presentation. So that is the, the aspect of a font size. If you want to present in a font size, present in a uniform manner. Don't present in a one color, a different color here, another one, another one. No, there, there should be a uniformity. Thank you, sir. And uh, my, my first vice, you know, I have an assignment, but I, I would like to just stay for a while and then enter into another assignment. Hello, sir. D did you hear me, sir? Wow. Okay. Now I was uh, I was muted before. I'm now I've now been. 
I'm now omitted. Yes, I was going to, I was saying that, uh, thank you very much for, for, for your contribution. We appreciate it. Uh, but one thing I want to comment about the references uh, is that um, the new format does not allow candidates to reference. Uh, this is because we don't have room or provision for literature review. I think what, um, what candidates can do is actually to have um, what we call bibliography, um, especially if you are doing valuation, uh, if you made use of you know, Paris valuation tables or you know, documents that assisted you in doing the work, yes, you can actually, um, you can actually acknowledge it. But the structure that we have now does not actually allow for referencing because it is not theory. You are actually telling us, this is what I did. This is how I did it. These are the challenges that I faced. And this is how I overcame those challenges, practically the solution that you actually um, deployed. And if I am to do it again, this is what I, this is what I would do differently. So in the case, um, the candidates are no longer expected by virtue of the new format to actually reference. But you can actually acknowledge documents that you made use of, that assisted you in carrying out your work, you know, whether it is a manual of a, a project management that, you know, that you, you consulted in finding your, in, in, in um, resolving the issue or whatever, but not as a reference. So thank you very much. And I, I think Alide should also understand that. Thank you very much. I know you are a man of so many parts. Um, we are expecting some, uh, some uh, this thing from you in the committee that you, um, you are currently participating in. So thank you. Uh, God bless you. Um, so we move on to the next. I have a lot of hands here. I'm sure we can accommodate everybody. Emmanuel Lugundari, you asked a question before. Are you following up with another question or what? Okay, can we have Dario Latunji now, please? Dario Latunji, can you unmute Dario Latunji to ask this question? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And I was sincere appreciation for this privilege, but um, to make it um, brief and very fast, sir. Um, I didn't really get the information that we had to send this critical analysis to Abuja today. So I just go to the uh -huh. body. I, said I just go to our body. The, the, um, the reports, the critical analysis. Yes. I didn't know it was supposed to get to Abuja today. So I just go to um, our head office at the Keja, Alausa, and we're told it was supposed to go to Abuja. So like a way of begging and pleading, I don't know. I'm, I want to give it to them today. I don't know if we can be given the privilege that as we are submitting you, today. You, you need to, sorry, we are, questions. You need to ask questions about presentation. If it is about okay. submitting, if you are submitting, please, can you get across to the head of membership? Please, we are talking, of, we are talking about presentations that were made today and questions, okay? Um, to, to Tana Okoye, your question, please. Lotana Okoye, you are mute, Lotana Okoye. Hello, sir. Can you yes, hear me? Please. Good afternoon, sir. My first vice president. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure. I thank you for organizing this program. Thank you. Thank and you. My, my fellow colleagues who are over there, my senior colleagues who are over there, teaching us on how to go about our write-up. Sir, let me go to the question. Please, sir, you know, some of us during this uh, festive season could not be able to reach out to our supervisors to sign our uh, work and to proofread it. So it makes us, it makes most of us to fall back 
uh, at times, that is to fall short of time in sending our work to Abuja. I'm pleading to your office and to the national body to please test, uh, can you give us time to like a week and or two weeks extension for submission? That's my question, sir. Thank you. I, I think straight away, you're not asking questions on the presentation, but let me just tell you that critical analysis submission is a continuous exercise at the institution. Um, you can submit at any time. Okay, that sir. You know you are ready. There is no problem about that. So you submit as you finish, as you are ready, submit your critical analysis. It's continuous. And if we have to, if we have an interview coming up, say in a week, if we are able to accommodate, you know, in a few days before that, we will do. But the first thing is just submit your critical analysis when it is ready. Okay. Okay. Okay, so sir. There is no deadline that oh, you must submit. If you don't submit, don't submit again. No. It's a continuous exercise. All right. Okay. okay so we have a question now. I can see Stephen Olumide's hand up. Stephen. Yes. Stephen Olumide. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I want to appreciate the first vice for this program. It's actually a wonderful one. And then we have learned one or two things from what the facilitators has, um, has spoken about. Uh, my question is on the, uh, the synopsis. Uh, and the question is that like someone who has his synopsis approved for like probably a year now, is it still valid, yes. you know, to that, that's my question, sir. Um, th that is a question. I think your synopsis is valid, you know, for a period of two years. Uh, is the head of membership there? Victor Kocha, are you there? Yes, I think your synopsis is valid for a year. You know, if you have it approved a year, you can still submit. Okay? Is that okay? Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Or, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yes. Uh, I got this. Go on, go on. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, can we listen to Imana Lugundari again? Imana Lugundari, please. No. Yes, you might have to go. Question, sir. There is the question. I've already asked the question. Okay, then you should have. Question. Oh. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay. 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 Any more question? Any more question? So, if there are no questions, all that remains. Thank all. Okay. Is this the old hand? Are you asking another question or what? Yes, sir. Sorry. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Please, okay. I want to so, ask if um you failed the uh, just concluded interview um November last year. Can you can you sit for this? January interview. Well, if you are ready, it depends on why you why you are why you are not successful. 
And I think that is something you need to engage the, the, the secretariat, the membership department, you know, uh, depending on why you, why you did not pass, pass the first time, you may be able to attend the next interview. All right? So uh, I think it's going to be uh, individual circumstances dictated. Okay? Oh, you need be Kayode. Ask your question, please. Oh, you need to be please. Admin, can you unmute this this uh, participant, please? Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Uh, we are very grateful for this uh, innovation, and we also appreciate all our facilitators for the seminars delivered. Sir, my question is: uh, now that the next interview is coming up on twenty six. And uh, it is expected that intending uh, associate will have submitted all the uh, documents by now. And this seminar is coming up today. What now happens if at the point of interview, the candidate default in his uh, critical analysis in any of the things that have been highlighted today? That's my first question, sir. Then, second, then, is your uh, reference? When can the Candidate rights on violation. And maybe he tries or he defines violation according to one of the smaller communities. And he referenced such testing at the end of his work. Out of place. Sorry, sorry, take your second, your, your last part of your second question again. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I said, if I write on valuation hmm. and I define valuation maybe according to GSA Fedora, for example, is it out of place if I reference such person at the end of the work? That's my second question. Okay, I think you need to there's 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 a there's there is a need for candidate, candidates to understand the new format of the critical analysis. Um when you are when, when you are when your critical your critical analysis is on valuation, um, the definition aspect is not what we are asking you to to do. Nobody is asking you to define valuation. You are writing on a valuation exercise that you have that you participated in, say mortgage valuation. Look, description of the project, for instance. Oh, um, mortgage valuation of a five-bedroom detached house in uh, Metama address or whatever. What is that? What, what is that property? What value, what purpose was the valuation uh, for mortgage valuation? Now, how did you do it? You see, you have in valuation, you have two aspects. You have the scientific and then you have the artistic. Scientific aspect is the process, the procedure, what you did. So we are not asking you to define mortgage valuation. We are not asking you to define investment valuation. We are asking you because we expect you to know that, look, this is what I'm doing. I did mortgage valuation of so so. How did you do it? What did you do? What basis did you use? And what are the challenges that you faced? So it is not about definition. It is in that, that period where we had literature review that you now start to define concept, define uh, uh, various as various parts of the, this thing that you're talking about. But in this case, definitions are not required anymore. Um, you just go practical. What did you do? You see, the whole idea about this is to test your ability to write reports. Because when you are writing your a report of, you know, um, 
um, uh, this thing you did in the office, you don't need to start putting uh, definitions or uh, whatever. So that is your idea. So I would suggest that you get the handout on the new format of the critical analysis and look at the structure. That's not my point. So yeah. there is no provision in this new format for definitions. It is practical. It is absolutely practical. Your involvement, what you did, how you did it, the challenges that you faced, how you overcame those challenges. The whole idea is to learn from your from what you also went through. Okay. And then the other the other question about those who had already prepared and submitted their critical analysis. Of course, this particular uh, engagement is not targeted at those that are appearing for interview at this at this um, at this current interview only. It is also that's why we made it open. Those who have finished their exam, nice exam, so that they can write for me. Now they know how to go about to guide them to go about writing their critical analysis. But in any case, um, if you have submitted and if you are not totally in um, uh, in compliance with what you have been told today, of course, there will still be. Um, uh, I'm sure the assessors will take that into account. I don't think you will be absolutely at a disadvantage completely. But I think it is important that you know we start doing it the proper way. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Any more questions? I can see Lotana. Are you still asking questions? Lotana, let's have yes, sir. Yeah, my question is um uh, from where does the the words in critical analysis start counting from? Is it from the first page that is the cover page or from the uh uh table of contents or from the chapter one? So uh, let us not be confused, sir. It's chapter one. Yeah. Chapter one. All those First. acknowledgement, uh, whatever, they don't count. Your, okay. your words start from chapter one. Okay. And okay. at chapter last. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. you have appendices. Appendices are actually not part of the words. And okay. one thing that we tell you, I want to, I want to, one trick I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to tell you, I want to give you now is that when you are writing your critical analysis, you see your pictures and the screen of the pictures and so on, you don't have to include it in the body of your report. Your pictures, plans, and whatever are better, you know added as appendices. And when you do that, you will save yourself a lot of space and, you know, the words that you can use in your critical analysis. Appendices are not counted as part of the words. Even if you explain things, like the appendices. So you can have your pictures, your images, and then still describe, describe you know, provide some descriptions under them in your appendices, it will not count. But if you include it in your body of the report, where with the description, you know, with the explanation there, those explanations will count. So it's always better to have all your all your all your visual or uh, whatever, even where you do calculation, uh, where you do valuation, your your valuation, you know, uh, um, your valuation sheet, you know, you can actually, instead of including it in the body of the report, you can actually make it an appendix and in the body of the report, refer to it. So it will still serve, serve the same purpose, but it will conserve you, you know, the, the words and allow you to make use of the words in the main body of the report. Is that, is that clear? 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see Asher Douglas. That's interesting. Please, your, your question, sir. Asher Douglas, please unmute him. Thank you. Go on, sir. My first advice. Thank you. This exercise is indeed quite commendable. Thank you very and, much. And uh, just to add my voice to what some other speakers have said, <coughs> I'm aware that uh, the current method of CA and uh, Synopsis assessment has been in operation for over six years. And in my opinion, it has been observed in consist it has been consistently been observed in a breach. Because um, most of the synopsis and the CAs that I've seen in the past six years have never complied. A lot of them never complied with the system that the institution recommended. I remember there was a time me in Fabio made a presentation at the Abuja branch. That's more than six years ago. Abuja branch, how the newly approved uh, synopsis and CA presentation should be presented by both the candidates and their supervisors. The candidates are not the only ones that have breached this provisions, but the supervisors as well, because they, most of the supervisors never guided their candidates properly. Now, the comment I want to make here is, now that we have uh, taken this initiative, I want to, uh, um, I want to, uh, that the management committee should escalate this to the next level by ensuring that, that any synopsis or CA that not comply with their approved standard should not even be uh, entertained in the first place. So that we begin to implement the things that we are talking about. Because by the time we begin to follow this standard, the issue of having to copy another person's work and claiming uh, authorship of those work will stop. Because you can only presentation is actually to test what you understand about what you have done through your pupillage. So if we need to implement it, we will have better, we will be producing better surveyors than we have at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a brilliant one. I, I agree with you that um, uh, the consistent breaches of the CA and um, of course the supervisors are also culpable, but that's why we involve we also involve supervisors in this exercise so that they also um because it's important for them to understand the new system also so that they can guide their 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 their, their candidates better um so i'm sure with what we are what we are doing now um uh, the situation will improve um in terms of escalating to the next level i think the the membership committee is actually charged with, uh, by constitutionally, you know, dealing with this. And I think um, uh, this is something we normally discuss regularly in management, in the um, uh, uh, membership committee. And, um, you know, as far as I know, there's a council resolution and decision that um, every CA must comply, will be approved, this thing. So, I think it's more of implementation and uh, trying to accommodate uh, accommodate uh, candidates. I think we would we would um, there will be improvements, and then if the supervisors um, are able to guide these candidates better, I think we will move towards full compliance. And it is it is in the interest of everybody and the profession that we all do this. Because um, uh, as essence of yours and value, the truth of the matter is that what we sell is services. And services, patronage, and you know, depends on quality. And quality starts from this level, you know, entry into the profession, understanding, you know, so that's very important. That's why 
uh, not, it's not only those of us who are politicians uh, in the professional institution, uh, not the only ones that have uh, obligation to the institution, but essentially the, the supervisors and those of us in practice by guiding the younger ones properly, ensuring that they, they appreciate what they are doing and understand it. Then we'll be able to impact the, um, uh, the, the market positively. You know, so um, I think we are, we, are, we, are, we are on the right path to improving the situation. Thank you very, very much. So on that note, um, I would like to thank everybody uh, for, for your contribution, for your participation. I see Gabo Konko, just you, we started together, we are ending together, you didn't say anything. But I want to appreciate you, my brother, for your patience and for your interest. And um, um, we also, I also thank all the other uh, supervisors, colleagues that have joined this, um, uh, this exercise. Um, like I said, it's going to be um, a regular, you know, program uh, until, you know, we're able to achieve the level that uh, we expect. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day. May I now ask um, our senior colleague here, you know, at least um, among all, uh, uh, Gabo Konko, to give us some give us a closing prayer. Gabo Konko, closing prayer, please. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, Daddy, Amen. we thank you for this uh, interactive session. And we begin to thank you again for the way you are taking the Nigerian Institution of Estates of Yours and Valuers. And we thank you again for our first first president and the ESCOs. That, Father, you continue to give them the wisdom with which to pilot the affairs of the institution. My Lord Amen. and my God, we begin to equally pray for, the, for our, uh, our, our probationers and our graduates. That Father, that what they have learned today, they will put it to practice in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the same time, with our supervisors, that also they too, we put what they have learned today into practice in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the same time, I continue to pray that the institution will become stronger and grow bigger. In Amen. Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate I you, my you, first vice. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.